Okay, looks like I finally clicked the right thing. Um, so, there's a little bit more to cover about the uh, recent things. Uh, I've been texting back and forth with certain people about the goings on. And uh, between us, we uh, came up with uh, the title of today's video, since it's needed. Uh, the title of this video, I'm pretty sure I'm going to put in The Liar, The Witch, and The Resignation. So, um, I've already said quite a bit about the current news about the uh, Ada County GOP. And uh, on their way out, uh, the six resignees made a lot of claims and did some provocative action. I think I've been pretty clear on that. Some of which was to suggest and make representations that a bunch of ultra right monofactual I'm going to say that one again a bunch of ultra right monofactional purists were taking over and their jobs became too difficult <laughs> there's a bunch of things wrong with that as you can probably imagine but whatever you know if this really was a monofactional ultra right etc 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 thing as the mass resignation letter suggests, this would not be the takeover that it is. It just simply wouldn't be. Uh, the thing is, is that uh, many of us from different factions and different views and groups have had been working to get to that day when, you know, the day that the uh, quitters resigned for some time. And, uh, some of the some of those people I've been very opposed to you know, over, over the years. Some people I don't inherently trust, uh, and others for whatever reason I'm just not grouped together with. Um, we were all working together because we knew if we didn't, the local GOP would never be free of Victor Miller and his way of controlling things. The only thing that really ties us all of these different groups together that were working together. Um, the only thing that really ties them together is a really vague thread of conservatism. And, and you know what? That's okay. I am completely fine with that. If we are working together to uh, further the cause of the uh, Republican Party, I'm okay with that. Not everybody's going to agree with me. They're the I'm not going to agree with them, and that's that's still okay. Now, I'm going to put up, or I'm not going to put up or directly cover the resignation letter uh, that um, started all this uh, for a few different reasons, and those reasons include uh, it has had enough coverage already. I mean, come on. Is there anyone that can honestly say otherwise? There's been a lot of coverage about that letter itself already. And I, I find it interesting who the uh, press is just automatically simping for. And um, that letter itself, it does not come from an honest or upright position. It just simply doesn't. I mean, I can tell, I can tell it was written by Victor Miller. For, for starters, and he, not only is he very, very characteristically sour and very bitter about all of it, but, you know, of course, he, uh, he has to change the perception of reality to make himself look a lot more innocent and blameless than he actually was. That's just his M.O. It's just the M uh, M.O. of most narcissists. It yeah <laughs> and you know in, in the right context it would actually be pretty sad uh you know the next reason uh it has many factual errors in it that uh, about both my my friends and myself which and i believe that those errors are deliberate so take what you will from that and uh not only that but it gives more attention to the kind of sore losers that you absolutely should not be giving any attention at all. I mean, if you're dealing with these kinds of quitters, you should not be giving them any more attention. 
uh, you, you know, otherwise just bad things happen down the road. You shouldn't be encouraging this kind of crap. So, uh, I will note here that I'm recording at about 4.25 p.m. Uh, October 9th, uh, 2023. So this is at least a few days later. And uh, as far as about an hour ago, I'm still getting people texting me about the whole Kim Wickstrom email on the way out, you know, uh, that was sent out about the resignations. She's apparently still working from a knowingly old email list and is still representing herself as someone who has any kind of authority in the Ada County GOP. So take those writings over which for what they are. <laughs> um, well, today, starting this morning, and uh, the, you know, there have been some statements to the public uh, on the resignations and related matters. I'm, I definitely am going to cover those. So uh, I'm going to switch over to the first one here as soon as OBS starts behaving. And, and this one is from the Ada County uh, GOP itself. Let's see if I can transition. Sure. Okay. So this one uh, says a bunch of contact information for immediate release dated properly. Uh, six members of the Ada County Republican Central Committee recently notified the press and our 183 precinct committeemen that they decided to resign, citing their in inability to leave. I like how this one already just punches <laughs> the other letter in the gut here, because you know, and and does it in just like the last uh, less than a quarter of the sentence. <laughs> I like how it does that. Just it just comes out swinging, lands it straight in the gut. Um, the Ada County Republican Central Committee uh, Executive Board consists of 21 members, at least rightfully so. And I might remember to touch on that. I might not. Uh, nine officers, 11 legislative district chairs, and the Region Four chair. The remaining 15 voting members of the Executive Board disagree with a small minority group of six officers who abandoned their leadership posts at a critical time. And they're not overplaying that at all when they, you know, when they say that this is, um, this is kind of, uh, an important time and it's kind of, and the timing I believe is very deliberate. <laughs> if, if, if you get what I'm saying, they, they wanted to, uh, leave at this time for certain effects and I and I totally believe that one of those things was to uh, basically decapitate the uh, Republican Party and to make it difficult to um, act towards its mission as it were the rest of our Central Committee is working hard to help capable leadership win the next municipal election and well, that's definitely a thing going on right now. You know, I mean, we got municipal elections going on all happening at roughly the same time. And, you know, and a really big, really big one, I believe, is uh, what's going on in Eagle. And another really big one is uh, what's going on in Boise. Uh, yeah, and uh, while a lot of us, while official party support isn't um, being involved in Boise, a lot of us are helping in the background in a lot of ways such as you know door knocking and whatnot because you know we have we also have a very big interest in putting in an independent in because at least it will be better than having Mick Lennon around so uh the Ada County Republican Central Committee fiercely I'm sorry remains fiercely dedicated to building and strengthening the Republican Party from the grassroots up and electing Republican candidates that's literally uh, just a line ripped out of the mission uh, in uh, the bylaws where, you know, this is literally what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be strengthening the Republican Party from the grassroots up and electing Republican candidates. That's part of literally what we're supposed to be doing. So, uh, and the thing is, is that not only that, but I can personally attest that uh, a lot of people are, it's almost like the end of Tron. 
Yeah, if any of y'all have seen that, where uh, every you know uh, the MCP has been defeated and everything starts to turning from red to blue. <laughs> Don't take any political um, meaning from that, but uh, you know the the everything starts changing color again and everything starts being opened up and you know programs can talk to each other again. It's very much like that where everything started uh, opening up all at once and people wanted to volunteer more again which is not something I've seen in quite a while, at least since pre-pandemic, if you get where, where I'm coming from there. And then, um, not only that, but uh, since I had also been encouraging people on the side to uh, engage with the state party directly, uh, you know, some of that kind of opened up too. So on the volunteer front, this is a really good thing, you know, especially with that line right there. I'll finish out the letter here. Um, the resignations of the six officers have triggered a necessary financial review. And uh, I've been saying a lot, you know, both uh, in these videos and on Twitter and on Facebook about such a review. <laughs> we will meet soon to fill the vacancies, finish the work on this pivotal election, and establish a path to move forward as a more unified county committee. And that's what it is, because, you know, without the... Resignees, I did have to look that word up. I'm going to admit to that. <laughs> the resignees, they uh, they tried stopping the work. And it's going to continue. And not only that, it's probably going to, uh, the work is probably going to be a lot better off and people are going to be more excited, more motivated to do that now that these things have happened. And uh, I agree with all of this. I agree with all of it. So yes, before anybody tries to say this letter doesn't um, doesn't uh, represent the central committee, one, yes it does. As per some things that Victor Miller himself put in, by the way, <laughs> and, and not, not only did that, but it also represents the majority opinion anyway. So, but, um, that statement wasn't the only statement made today that I'm going to be covering. There's also another. As soon as uh, OBS starts working here. Okay. So this one, as soon as... There we go. Okay. I'll uh, go back up to the page because I had to load everything up kind of quickly. I need to be... I, I really need to be doing a video on this like right now and so... Some things kind of happened a little bit too quickly. Uh, ID GOP statement on Ada County Republican Central Committee, because, you know, uh, state party often makes statements of this kind, you know, at least, you know, from uh, at least every other day or so, um, for whatever reason. For immediate release, October 9, blah, 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 Boise, Idaho. The Idaho Republican Party was informed on Thursday evening. I think they're giving being a little bit generous with the wording there, but okay. On Thursday evening, that six officers of the Ada County Republican Central Committee resigned mere minutes before the regular. Oh, so now that they're that might not be technically correct. It was uh, within an hour of it. That much I know. That might not be technically correct, but you know what? I don't think it's um, a difference that's really going to matter at this point. So I won't be. I won't be hammering the point. In doing so, in doing so, the six uh, officers leveled five accusations against the Idaho Republican Party. We categorically deny each of these accusations, as well they should. First, the Idaho Republican Party represents more than half a million voters throughout our wonderful state. We believe that the voters deserve to have as much information as possible before they cast their votes in the primary. County Central Committees have the option for their elected precinct committeemen to vet candidates and provide recommendations to voters, and they take that responsibility seriously. Well, I certainly do. And, uh, you know what? You know what? Screw it. I I'm going to name names here. Victor Miller, in the uh, 2020 uh, uh, cycle, you know, running up to the 2020 uh, primary, had was pushing a whole slate of candidates, including one, uh, including uh, an, an opponent of mine for the 
for precinct committeemen in this precinct. It was the pre, this precinct was called 1708 at the time, uh, you know, before the redistricting. And this this person's name was Matthew Clements. And uh, I and of course, as you do in an election, you you do research on your opponent and find out come to find out that the dude is very much a stereotypical centrist uh, liberal student, pretty much center left liberal student. And I can't say it for certain, but I'm pretty sure that he was um, uh, registered as Republican to mess up the Republican Party like a lot of the um, local Democrats are doing. And so, uh, you know, and that whole slate of uh, things, you know, that whole Vic, you know, effort that uh, Victor had behind him, that was called Make It a Great Again. And uh, what we find out not, not long after that convention, because, you know, it's a um, short trip from the uh, primary election to the reorg to the uh, uh, to the convention of that year. Now, not long after the convention, because I saw that dude at the convention. He was actually part of the District 17 delegation. Uh, nobody, you know, he dropped he dropped off the face of the earth. And uh, during uh, a meeting near, I think, near the end of the near the end of that summer, find out he's He's immediately moved out, and not only that, but asking about asking around about the details of that. But I have I can say with a reasonable um, degree of certainty that uh, Victor Miller and his little cult knew that he was immediately going to move out. And this is this is the um, this is the kind of um, person that they wanted taking care of that respons you know the responsibility of a precinct committeeman. And they dragged their feet and played a lot of games with me about the um, about replacing him because you know I was pretty much the only the only one on anyone's list that uh, lived in this precinct. They went and found another person with pretty much the exact um, political views of I mean, this person, you know, somebody else. For you know to uh, push you know uh, to run against me in the special election for this, this person's name was Jacinta Rigi. And not and because um, and the thing is they they dragged their, they dragged their feet something like three months worth of time before they actually found this person. So they were literally dragging that out so that they would prevent me from being uh, you know, from being elected. And <laughs> and uh, you know this uh, this person Jacinta Rigi she never showed up to district meetings and not long after she was uh, um, elected in a special election for that precinct she moved to Arizona <laughs> you know this place was literally just a stepping stone for her and uh, she apparently is involved in a lot of the bad things that are going on in uh, the Arizona Republican Party right now so go figure yeah taking that you know responsibility seriously well you know what a lot of my friends and a lot a lot of things that i've done we're taking that responsibility but the victor cult has not and they've been pushing people that have not moving on second the state central republican um, uh, i'm going to start this again second the state central committee has put in place rules to protect the uh, the integrity of the republican primary it's not a mystery as to what we're talking about there. Uh, crossover voting is a real problem. As high-profile figures encourage Democrats to register as Republicans to change the outcomes of our primary. This is, they, you know, local Democrats, they like to say that this is a lie, but we catch them all the time saying otherwise. Just saying. So, um, this... It almost feels like they really shouldn't even have to say this. The, the state party should even have to say this. But, you know, okay, fine. That is a point, and it is a point directly against the resig resignation letter. Third, the central committees have a responsibility to hold elected officials accountable to Republican principles and the Idaho Republican platform. Elected officials work for the people, and if they affiliate as Republicans, then they are obligated to support the platform. Voters deserve to know if their representatives are holding true to their promises and principles. 
this is quite, you know, and the thing is, uh, if y'all have been watching my videos, you know that this is a pretty much directly from the platform. Voters deserve to know what the representatives are saying and doing, and they have the right to hold the, the representatives in government accountable. They have that right. And um, any suggestion to to um, any suggestion to the contrary is quite literally un-American. So, net going on, moving on. Fourth, county committees have a long. I'm sorry, I'm going to start that again. I said that wrong. County fourth, county committees have long supported the uh, operating expenses of the Idaho Republican Party. It's been this way for a very long time. And until recently, when Victor started screwing things up, it worked this way. Unfortunately, some counties were not paying their fair share, forcing others to shoulder the burden. And this, this should be a mark of shame with Ada. But eventually there, Victor Miller started flaunting this, that others were shouldering the burden and no... Uh, we don't run. We don't want to help um, offset that burden until you start giving us credit for electioneering type activities. That is just so unbelievably unrepublican. That attitude. Uh, the former chairman of Ada County campaigned on the promise to have Ada County pay their fair share of dues. I might cover exactly what they're referring to here because I know exactly what they're referring to. I have the video saved somewhere, and uh, I may or may not actually uh, cover it, but I, it's really tempting to do it, you know, to what they're talking about right here in this sentence, because it, it that video has some very damning things about Victor Miller and the effort that he was, uh, the, the, the effort that he was putting forward at the time. All 44 counties pay dues that go to support the day-to-day -day operation of the state party office, which is about 20% of, you know, one-fifth of the overall budget. And it's been that way for some time. So there's that right there. Now, fifth, the Idaho Republican Party is blessed with more grassroots involvement than ever. Thousands of volunteers have stepped up to serve as precinct committeemen convention delegates, and ambassadors to their communities. The only bullying is coming from those who take to the pages of mainstream media to attack fellow Republicans. And I have to say it. I've been advised not to say this by certain people, but I'm going to say it, is that, that that letter, that resignation letter, was literally trying to bully some people into one position or another, or to be doing certain things. They, they were trying to last this that ditch effort to bully people. On top of the timing. Well, you know what? It didn't work. These accusations from the former officers are little more than projection and sour grapes. Ooh, they're, they're really punching in the gut here. Oh, more like a groin. That's, all, that, that's almost below the belt, but not really. Uh, these accusations from the Former officers are little more than projection and sour grapes from an old guard that is angry about losing their own power. I said something extremely similar. In fact, they probably took it from a post of mine um, at around the time that uh, Ryan Davidson got elected to be chairman. I said something about that, and I think they, I think they took that from there. And you know what? That is completely fine to me. <laughs> The Idaho Republican Party will continue fighting for faith, family, and freedom, and representing everyone who stands for Idaho values. Because, you know, we'll work together with people we have before to get certain things done. And, you know, some people who weren't necessarily a part of the Idaho Republican Party, you know, you know, if, uh, you, did, you know, if our goals align, we'll, we'll definitely do stuff for you. So, you know what? We're going to continue moving on. And you know what? I think I'll transition to the potato. There we are. Okay. So there we are with everything. And that's kind of where we're at right now. But uh, I did cover them. 
I think that uh, this story definitely isn't over. But here, that's where we are. Y'all have a good day.